To look back on any era in Wilburn's history as the good old days might do an injustice to a time before or after it. Truth be known, there have been many, many good old days here at Wilburn, and there'll be just as many good new days to come. Wilburn started back on January 18, 1894. It was founded by Dr. A. M. Owen and Dr. Edwin Walker, and there were a total of 11 staff members. The hospital was called the Sanitarium. These days, that might not seem like a very patient-friendly name, but back then, the name Sanitarium assured patients of sanitation and cleanliness. Here, we see an early surgery taking place. Some of the amenities of the time were the tiled floor and not only gas, but electric lights above the operating table. Well, we still have tiled floors in surgery, not the same ones, of course, and we've gone to all electric lights these days. After the death of Dr. Owen in 1899, the hospital was named the Walker Hospital. Dr. James Welburn joined as chief of staff. In 1922, Dr. Walker died and Dr. Welburn stepped up to management of the hospital. Soon, the name changed once again to the Welburn Walker Hospital. Skip forward in time another 20 or so years to the early 1940s. As Dr. Welburn prepares for his retirement, he negotiates a deal that would secure the future of the hospital. The hospital is sold to the First Baptist Church and is stipulated to be a non-profit organization. In honor of Dr. Welburn, the hospital is renamed Welburn Memorial Baptist Hospital. No other area hospital is rated higher. The nurses took the time. They really cared. Mommy's all better now. Welburn Baptist Hospital, your vital sign for hospital care. What has really set Welburn apart from any other medical institution through the years isn't that we remain on the forefront of new medical technologies, although we do, it's always been our people. Dr. Brown, call the ER, please. Dr. Brown, call the no ER. No other area hospital has a more complete range of services. <laughs> Welburn Baptist Hospital, your vital sign for hospital care. This video is a tribute to everyone who has assisted in surgery, cooked meals for patients, spackled our walls, removed a malignant tumor, helped someone through traumatizing mental depression, checked a patient into the hospital, worked in finance, or in any other area of the hospital. This is our way to say thank you for helping make this a truly wonderful institution. Please give yourself and your co-workers a round of applause. I think what makes Welburn Hospital so special is the people that work here. I think it's the caring and concern that the employees show towards each other as well as the patients that come underneath their, their care. It's the people that worked here in the past and the people that work here now. Employees are just like one big family. If you need anything, you can find it here. You can find your support and your help from your friends here at Welburn Hospital. I think Welburn is very special. I've been an employee, I've been a patient, I've been a volunteer. I've always felt like they've tried, the, the hospital administration has tried to keep abreast with the changes and the trends of what the patient populations, what the needs of the community are. It's the people and the, pe the way people relate not only to each other, and many times it's been described to me as the family. I think everybody has a commitment. Uh, to treat everyone with respect, and uh, we just do, we just have a real good cohesive feeling. Now is not a time to simply look back. It's a time to look ahead. We need to focus on the new opportunities that await us as we venture into this relationship with St. Mary's. Welburn has always been about change and about helping the community, and we continue with that spirit today. Back in the early years, things were sure different. The nurses wore funny hats. Eh, I guess some of the old-time spirit is still alive and well at Welburn today. Here's a recent shot that takes a look back. This was taken during our 100-year anniversary back in 1994. As technological advances improved the way we performed, 
Welburn adapted the new practices and grew stronger. We've tried many medicines and practices that were considered experimental, some more successful than others. I think these two were trying to escape rehab. Here is the physical therapy mercury vapor lamp. Looks like something straight out of Buck Rogers. One last shot from the physical therapy department. Here's the combination steam bath hair salon. All right, nurse, set the timer for bouffant and get out of the way. The funniest thing probably is the night that Welburn Hospital had its own ambulance service. A woman came running into the emergency room screaming at the top of her lungs, help, help, he's been shot, he's been shot, help, quick, come quick. So we grabbed a cart and we ran outside thinking that this person was in the car out on the driveway. We got out on the drive and there was no car there and the woman was halfway down the drive. And she continues to yell at us, please come quick, come quick. So we took off down the drive because at the foot of the drive there was a parking lot. We thought, well, maybe the car was in the parking lot. She veers off and she starts running down Cherry Street. And Bert and I looked at each other like, what have we gotten ourselves into? We're out in the street and we're kind of really slowing down now because we definitely don't know what's going on. And finally, uh, Bert or Jim yelled at her, well, where is he? And she said, he's over there, he's in the car over there. To make a long story short, the gentleman had gotten shot in the calf uh, on Lincoln Avenue and his friends had just tossed him into the car. They were bringing him to the hospital. They ran out of gas right in front of St. Mary's Church. And so she, they sent her to run into the hospital to get some help. So, Robbie, the electrician, found a live snake in, in the basement one day. And it was on the laundry's mind and I was working on a cart. And one of the girls on the laundry thought it would be kind of funny to put a rubber snake under the cart that I was working on. Well, I seen the snake and I killed it. Killed I killed that rubber snake with a hammer. <laughs> I don't like snakes. One of the other uh, things that happened when I was in the quality department, I left physical medicine for a few months and, and devoted all my time to quality. And so, jokingly, I told them, you know, they had to leave my office as a shrine while I was gone. Well, when I came back, they had prepared a slideshow for me to show me how they had used my office shrine in the seven months that I was gone. And they had pictures of everybody doing everything in that office. Uh, even Marge Soigench was in there with her feet on my desk. There was a time that when I had my 60th birthday, they decorated the room all up in balloons and posters. And one of the young men that worked up in our information system came down and he said, GB, you look good for your age. So we thought that was kind of funny. We had an orderly that was funny that we always laughed at him because every day at noon, he wore the Ben Casey outfit and he always left his two buttons undone and everything, and he would make his rounds from dietary kitchen to dietary kitchen, and he always filled both those pockets full of hamburgers. So when he came around, he had hamburgers sticking out of both pockets, no buns or anything, just burgers. Steve showed up one morning, rather chagrined, and reported that as he was driving home this cold winter night with a great deal of snow, the car on Stringtown Hill caught fire. And his only alternative in order to save himself was to drive this car into this huge snowbank at the time to able to put the fire out and to get Steve safely out of the car. So Steve Kern's car stories in the early years were greatly endearing to us. If anyone knows Steve Kern, they know uh, that he always has some sort of sample of something laying in, in or around his office, on his desk, on his secretary's desk. And Marcia was his secretary at the time, and there was a, a, a sign laying on Marcia's desk, and I guess we were probably at that time um, looking at new signage for the facility. Um, so I picked it up, and I don't recall exactly what it said, I think it probably was women's restroom or something because we all laughed, oh wouldn't this be funny, uh, to hang up on, at Steve's doorway. So uh, we did, <laughs> not knowing that it was going to actually stick hard and fast to the wall, we 
tried everything, um, couldn't get it off, so finally just pulled it off. Well, off came uh, plaster, paint, everything. So we panicked. We paged, voice paged Phil, who was a painter at that time, Phil Shreve, and he came up and uh, assessed the damage and um, bless his heart, he worked real hard and fast. I think when the, when the bosses all walked back in, the paint was probably still wet. Looking at pastimes is a lot of fun, but new advances and highly trained professionals have always been the backbone of Welburn. There it is. No other area hospital is more advanced in neurosurgery. The surgery went very well. You'll be home in a few days. Welburn Baptist Hospital, your vital sign for hospital care. Our roots are here, but our legacy is here, practicing medicine in an ever-changing arena. When we first opened the hospital, patients would be brought in by carriage, then by motor car. Later, ambulance service came around, and in the early 1980s, Welburn's Air Ambulance, Life Flight, hit the skies. All clear to approach aircraft. No other area hospital gives you Life Flight Emergency Air Ambulance. We're at the hospital now. The doctors are waiting for you. Welburn Baptist Hospital, your vital sign for hospital care. Since then, we've logged 5,160 patient transports and are now on our second helicopter. The Life Flight crew works hand in hand with our emergency trauma department to get patients to the hospital in the most timely way possible. I've seen a lot of technology changes here at Welburn. The computer? Uh, computers. 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 And fax machines. The technological changes that I've noticed since uh, I started was that the first disposable items were like um, miracles to us in our era. We were so used to sharpening our own needles and boiling our tubes and putting together our IV barrettes and making baby formula from scratch. One of my favorite machines is the datascope because you not only do you get the pulse oximeter, you get the, the uh, EKG, you get the blood pressure, you can do central line monitoring with that that machine and I think that's probably my favorite machine but I also like the hands-off defibrillator. For mental health our technology is our environment. Starting in 82 I believe um, we started modifying our environments for smaller units uh, that were very particular to patient types levels of care and with that, we also redecorated and had a, a very home-like environment for our patients, that it was a safe, warm environment. Uh, our first CT, uh, first CT unit was a major acquisition for Welburn Hospital. And in those days, I think a number of our people can remember that it wasn't a simple matter of having enough money in the bank or having enough money to uh, allow us to have credit to purchase these pieces of equipment. But we used to have to go through things such as certificate of need with the state. Here are some candid shots of some of the people that make Welburn, Welburn. I think the most endearing thing is, has been a unit that I worked on. Uh, in fact, I, I was fortunate enough to be able to be manager of that unit for about four years. Uh, we lost three staff members in a, a one-year period to date, uh, two, sort of, uh, two nursing assistants and one staff RN. And I guess it really touched me that the way the staff pulled together and gave them themselves um, joyfully, unselfishly, um, it was a tough time and a, and a lot of areas might have fallen apart over that, but I saw people kind of reach down and pull things out of themselves, whether it was how they worked or the amount they worked or, or what they gave of themselves. And you can't help but be touched by something like that, that, that people can go beyond that and, and do whatever was necessary. And, and that's what they did and that was a, a year that I probably will never forget. 
One thing I do remember specifically though, once in a while uh, we've had some pretty dramatic things occurring in our emergency department. And I'll never forget that, and this is indeed when, a time when Welburn was uh, partially involved with a campaign to uh, try to get unsafe lighters replaced in homes because we were having a real rash of in incidents of uh, young children setting fires in their homes. And indeed, this was one of those situations. I, I think it was a two-year-old that had set fire to uh, a mattress in a home. And indeed, that two-year-old had been very badly burned. And we had gone through the trauma with that family as they came in with not only the two-year-old, but another very young child of the family. And that second child had no clothes because literally the family had scooped that second child up, could come to the hospital. And within just a few minutes, I saw our staff starting to appear with clothes for that second child. So that second child was well taken care of also, as a family anxiety was, of course, with the, the first child being uh, treated for his burns. Um, the day of the plane crash at, um, at the Drury Inn in JoJo's, the the sense, the, the quiet hush that came over the whole hospital and the professionalism of our people as they dealt with that tragedy was, it, it just really made you proud to be a part of this organization and see how everyone handled that situation. It, I'll never forget it. It was... Um, it was it was sad, but to see how our people handled that, it was I was really, really proud of to be a part of of the hospital. The one thing that really stands out in my mind, as far as pulling at my heartstrings, was the child abuse case. And uh, unfortunately, the child was dead when we got it. There was a big court case over it. Uh, it the child was so badly beaten that. When I had to go to court and the prosecutor asked me, did you realize that, you know, he had this tear here on his ear, I hadn't seen that because I was so overwhelmed by everything else that I had seen. When I was playing Santa Claus, uh, some funny stories that they told Santa and some sad stories they told Santa Claus, and it kind of touched my heart pretty deep. And so, and Anything you'd like to share? No. They told that to Santa. One of the best things that, that probably kept me coming back in, in early staff nurse days was the fact that you could send patients home back to their family, functional, even after they've been here. They come in so ill, and through the different medications, the different therapies, uh, just virtue sometime of, of the environment of being with the other patients, and we would be able to send them back home better able to cope with what um, what brought them in to the hospital in the first place. My husband was here as a patient and he was dying of cancer and the girls and boys that worked up on that floor were so very kind and treated him so special that we felt like that it, even though we had to go through what we had to that it was just it was wonderful in knowing that people cared about you and took good care of you. In the area that I worked, which was pediatrics when I first started, uh, I was on the second shift and when I would come in there might be a brand new baby and it was just in a bassinet right there in the nursery and it was very, very ill. And then the next day I would come in, that baby would be gone. It would have passed away. So those were some really traumatic things that we saw, you know, that would really get you upset. So one of the doctors and myself went to Vanderbilt and we studied what they were doing for their babies, their mm -hmm. um, high-risk babies. And so then we brought that concept back to Welburn. And so that, one of the most, I think, exciting things was to actually see one of those babies go home. The Hospital School of Nursing was founded the same year the hospital opened in 1894 and quickly grew to be a very important part of Welburn. Our nurses have always held a special place in the heart of the hospital. Here are some shots of Nurse Catherine Binkley, or Bink as she was known, and her friends, sunbathing on top of the nurses' quarters back in the 30s. I guess relaxation was just as much fun then as it is today.
Why have I stayed at Welburn as long as I have? I've been here since October 1969. They've been so supportive of everything that I've wanted to do, um, things that I've been involved in. I think it's that caring attitude that just keeps me here. It's not just towards me, it's, it's towards everybody that, you know, gets involved with Welburn. The administration always appreciated what you did and you could become kind of what you wanted to become. So if you didn't want to move, you didn't have to move. And you just had this real deep feeling about the place. You kind of, well, I hate to use the term, but you really loved it. And I love my work and I love the hospital. And I think that's why we always, we, the majority of us stayed because we have a lot of long-termers here and I think that's the reason. I have stayed at Welburn Hospital because Welburn has met basically all my needs, uh, professional needs. I've had the opportunity for uh, professional growth. I've had maybe five or six different job titles. Well, you know, um, th the reason I stayed at Welburn Hospital is because it never occurred to me to go anywhere else. I'm proud to be an employee here and have always enjoyed my work and the people that I work with. And um, I, as I said, it just never occurred to me to go anywhere else. I think it's mostly because things are always changing, that uh, there's never been a good time to leave. Um, there's always been something else going on, some new project, some new challenge. As I said, I've had, I think I've had five different bosses and seven offices, so for one thing, I'm always just looking ahead to the next step and trying to figure out uh, what, how to meet the next challenge. I've had so much support and so much, so many opportunities for education and for change that I haven't you think you've been here 19 years and you're stagnant, and, and I never have been stagnant. I've enjoyed every single opportunity that I've, that I've had, so it keeps me coming back. Well, I think it's the people that's kept me around here. I've enjoyed them all. Um, you know, Evansville is very um, lucky to have three good hospitals, but I feel Welburn is special. It has that... Um, that special touch with people and I think the employees and volunteers and anybody that comes in here can feel that and that, that's one thing I feel that makes Welburn real special. Babies are special to the hospital. Today our newborn services are on the internet. We were the first hospital in the state of Indiana to introduce the worldwide birth announcement. We believe in caring for the child from prenatal through adolescent. By taking care of our children, we secure our own future. No other area hospital has more services for children. He's beautiful. I can't believe he's finally here. That's my baby brother. Welburn Baptist Hospital, your vital sign for hospital care. Well, that's the continuing story of Welburn. Now, here's the hospital president, Marge Soyagench, to give some closing comments. Welburn Hospital is 104 years old. We have many traditions at Welburn. We have many areas in which we have developed programs in which we have a great deal of pride. The people of Welburn have a great deal of pride, and I think that they have brought something very special to Evansville. We're looking forward to the future of tremendous changes, not only at Welburn, but throughout the entire United States in healthcare. We at Welburn are going to be making changes, are going to be every single one of us involved in changes for our future and for the future of healthcare in Evansville. It is taken our board and administration many years to try to develop a plan for the future of the people of Welburn, our patients, our physicians, that would make the greatest degree of sense as far as a continuation of the things that are Welburn. I believe that what we have coming in the future our merger of the people of Welburn with that of St. Mary's Medical Center is going to be a step of progress for Welburn to assure that we will be able to be involved in delivering the care that we take such great deal of pride in. A continuation of the services 
a new partnership with that of St. Mary's and that we will indeed uh, have our abilities continue to be able to serve the people of Welburn, which is what we stand for, which, which is what we are about. I thank the people of Welburn through the many years that I have been privileged to be involved. I believe that everyone has sincerely put themselves into what Welburn is, and indeed, it is just a new phase that we'll be going into because I think what we have done is meaningful and will carry forward to the future. I thank you all. What makes Welburn, Welburn? People. People of all ages, pulling together, working together, having fun, and spending a lot of quality time together. I didn't want to rattle my paper. <laughs> That's all I want to say. <laughs> Is that all the questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm done. <laughs> it, was that okay? Was that okay? Am I sitting straight? You're just fine. <laughs> tell me the truth. <laughs> just <laughs> got it. The junker. <laughs> I thought I was the one that was nervous. <laughs> oh, and I didn't do what you asked me to do. Oh, I'm sorry. Good. Okay. And I forgot to say that. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we start over? <laughs> I didn't even hear. <laughs> so where you want That's me to go from the? I got a note. Can I hold down? Uh, yeah. Lubed. <laughs> okay. You want me to start over? How bad was it? <laughs> I have a feeling most people know who I am. <laughs> I'm spending. Uh, no, I shouldn't say that. I messed up. That's different from what I said the first time. Well, I know I can't say the same thing twice. Right around the lens while I'm talking. <laughs> oh, I, you might have to end up cutting this one out. I'll probably get in trouble for telling this now, but...